So um, again, you you know, just had to find your your critical value from this table over here. Eight. Hmm. Eight nine. Okay. So step one is, as always with this chapter, rho uh, h i is rho is equal to zero, and h one is rho is not equal to zero. Don't forget the row, and it's not a P, it's a row. No little notch on it, just a little, just a swirl around. Your degrees of freedom is, well, you have 10 items here, 10 pairs. So it's going to be 10 minus 2, so it's 8. So here's the eighth row, my degrees of freedom, 8. And alpha is 0.01, so the very last row over here, 0.765. So that would be your... Um, your critical value. Oops. So we'll slide down and you'll see the um, picture of it down here. 0.765 shaded off to the right and negative 0.765 shaded off to the left. So these are my guilty regions, right? Point, negative 0.765 out to negative 1 positive 0.765 out to positive 1, and then 0 smack dab here in the middle. Then you're going to grab your, your R and put it in here. It's right in there. You can see it's totally in the not guilty range, right? So we are not going to reject H0. Do not reject H0. So step 4, do not reject H0. Don't worry about this part here um, because as long as you have your picture and you've drawn it in, then you don't have to sweat it. You don't have to tell me why. Just Right, do not reject H0 as long as you have your picture. Keep it simple. Um, if you want to know why, then this is the reason, right, because my R is less than my critical value. My absolute, uh, absolute value of R is less than my absolute value of the critical value. But, you know, don't, don't worry about that. It's just about, it's in this guilty region. Um, so, therefore, there is step five. There is not enough evidence, right? We did not reject H0, so there's not enough evidence to say that there is a correlation between age and wealth. Or you could have said it here, this is a little bit fancier way of saying it, you can say that too, either one. Either one of those is totally, totally good. Are there any questions before we move on? No? You guys are good with this? All right. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Um, now we're going to look at, um, so here's the thing. When you do five correlation, there are, be careful. Um, let me get a reader. Uh, who hasn't read yet? Uh, I think Ashley's read. Sterling, you haven't read yet. Go ahead and read. Exactly. Thank you. Right, exactly. So this is the whole stuff about chapter two again. Remember, we had that whole thing about correlation does not equal causation. In other words, we can't say that which one causes which. We say that they're correlated. So X might cause Y, or maybe Y might cause X. We don't know which causes which. So don't forget that. That's really important, and people screw that up all the time in the real world and causes all sorts of havoc. Um, or there could be a third variable that's causing both of them. Right? Or there may be a whole series of different variables in there that are all mixing in and making things happen. Um, and then finally, it could just be random. Right? There may not be a relationship at all, and just it randomly looks like there's a relationship because just randomly happen to be that the people who 
who are taller happen to have higher scores and people who are shorter happen to have lower scores, but there really isn't any sort of relationship between your height and your test score. It's just, you know, randomly happened to look like it was. All right, so now we're going to get into um, 10.3, actually I think it's 10.2 in the new book, um, regression. So the regression line is the line of best fit or least square line. Um, it's the straight line that best fits the scatter plot of the data. So you can try a line here or there or there, and you just keep trying different lines until you find one that fits the data the best. And what do we mean, mean by fits the data the best? It means that if you take the line and you take the distance from every single point in your sample to the line, right, up and down, straight up and down to it, and you square each of those distances and add them up. In other words, the sum of the squares of the vertical distance, it's the one that has, it's the one that has the smallest sum, or the sum of all those are the smallest. And I had, I remember doing that in college, actually, um, back in the old days. Um, it's used to predict the values of y for a given x. Um, but it's only valid when there is a correlation. In other words, when you reject H naught. So you only use this line to predict when you reject H naught. Otherwise, if R is not significantly different from zero, in other words, if it's not a line, if your data is not a line, then just use the average Y. Right? So you might say, well, what, what do you mean by that? So imagine I took everybody's grade um, in their last exam. I took everybody's height and I graphed that. And say we ended up getting something that looked kind of like this for our data. I will end up with some sort of line, linear regression line of some sort. Um, but there's no correlation here. So say our average test score was 81 but it has a line that looks sort of like, oh, I don't have, a split. oh, maybe I do. Hold on a second. And say it has a correlation line that looks sort of like that. Uh, it should probably be a little bit lower. Um, kind of like that. That seems reasonable. Okay. So what, this is, again, remember, this is people's heights and their test on the, their, their score on the last exam. So this is the linear regression line that my data gives me. My data is not correlated, right? There's no relationship. It doesn't form a line, but we still get a line here. So my question to you is, someone who is six foot eight, what is my best guess for their test score? I can either pick this number out here or something else. What do you guys think I should pick? The average on the test was 81. I took everybody's heights and, and, and I went ahead and graphed in their heights and the test scores that matched up with that and I got this line here. So someone who's six foot eight should be right here on the line. Should I give him this, say he has a score, what do you think my best guess is, that he has a score of 97 or what? What should be my best guess for his score? Oh, what you're saying. So yeah, so you're saying something, um, Okay, so again, the average was, okay, so let me re remind you guys, the average, the average exam was 81. Maybe I should blank out these things so you guys don't see them. Don't look at that. Don't look at this. Just think of my average test score, average exam score was 81. What do you think, someone six foot eight, what's my best guess for his exam score?
Yeah, 81, the average, right? That's my best guess. My best guess is the average. Because do you guys really think that there's a relationship that this is not a relationship. This is just a random bunch of dots. There is not actually a relationship here. It's not very linearly correlated. So your best guess when there's no correlation, this was the correlation of 0 0.307 or something like that, 323. Your best guess when there's no correlation is just the average, the average exam score. Because we all know that your height and your, and your test scores don't matter. They, are, they aren't related. So my best guess at that person's um, test score is just the average test. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, what you do expect is the, the mean is what you, the average is what you expect um, in general, right? That's what you should expect to get is the average. Okay. Unless there's some sort of relationship that tells you otherwise. So if there's some relationship that tells you otherwise, then you can use the line. In other words, if you reject H naught, then there is a line that you should use you should use the line predicted. So if my data is like this, then I should say, oh look, there there is a relationship between absences and final grades. There's these two things have a relationship. So I would expect that if you have fifteen 15 absences, you're totally going to fail this class. You, you guys see what I'm saying? Um, okay, good. So he, that's, that's the thing. If there is a relationship, then you can use that line to predict what, you know, what your value should be. But if there's no relationship, like this, or like this guy here, this, this guy down here in the bottom, then you can't use any line that they give you to predict anything off of. You should just use the average, right? Because we all know that height and um, test scores are not related. All right, so here's the formula for the regression line. Again, you do not need to use it. Just there it is. Instead, you're going to use your TI calculator and Linreg t-test, the same t-test you've been using, Linreg t-test, also gives you A and B, and also tells you what the um, formula is up here. So um, I'll show you what I mean. So here, here's Linreg t-test. I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, okay, I didn't want to move it over that much. Sorry. Way. Okay, so at any rate, uh, no, stop. This is really annoying. Um, all right, so you do Linrich t test. Oh, I know why. Okay, my bad. Um, it gives you your y equals a plus bx. It also gives you your A and your B right there. You can see them, A and B. So here I'm going to do Y equals A, 3.963, plus B, 0 0.1061 times X. Y equals 0.396 plus 1.061 X. That's it right there. That's my linear regression line. Everybody all right with this part? Okay, hopefully, because we're moving on. So again, the relationship um, between them is this line right here. It's the relationship between x, the expl explanatory variable, your independent variable, and your y, your dependent variable. And it's only valid when you reject H naught, and there is a correlation, there is a relationship. If you don't reject H naught, then just use the average. 
because you don't have a line. Your data is not a line. So it doesn't make sense to use a line to, um, to describe it. All right. And I'm just going to hit you guys over the head with it a couple more times, make sure that people really understand that. Um, he hasn't read yet. Uh, Eduardo, go ahead and read. I don't think you've read yet. Maybe he can't read. Uh, Sarah, you haven't read yet. Go ahead and read. Everybody's gone. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. 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 Right. So only use it if if there is a linear correlation and the graph says it does too. So let me show you how to use the graph. It's kind of cool. So here's my data stat edit. I have my X is in L1, my Y is in L2. I'm going to do this. This is neat. You don't need to do it, but I just want to show you it because it's really cool. This is how you graph it. So second, and then stat plot is straight above it. All right, second stat plot. And then you need to go to one. Hit enter on number one, and make sure you turn it on. So a lot of you will have it off. All right, see how now it's off? So it's, you're on, on. Go ahead and enter, and be blinking on the on. So now it's on. It won't work if it's not on. Type is this dotted line. X list is L1. My Y list is L2. And use that mark there. All right, so again, stat plot. Second, stat plot. Go to number one. Hit enter. Turn it on. So hit enter on the on thing. Get the dotted part and that part there. And then just do zoom number nine right here, the nine. Zoom nine. And it plots it for you. Just like that. Boom. You got it. So it's kind of cool. And you can see, so then you can kind of see, oh, yeah, it does form a line. This is something weird that you know, isn't a line um, because there's some, there's different ways of trying to get it. There's, there's sometimes times when R will be high and it's not, a lot, it's not a line. But this is definitely a line. You can see it visually. So then you know you're good to go. Okay. So here's some strategies. Um, if you reject H naught, then you can use this linear regression line. If you do not reject H naught, then just use the average Y bar. Just use Y bar to predict Y and use X bar to predict X. That's it. Everything else here is kind of redundant, so I'm not going to say it again. Um, oh, we already did that. Good. Let me skip that one. Oh, I guess I'm going backwards. Okay. So again, positive correlation. Right, you can use the line. Negative correlation, you can, you can use that line. Um, if there's no correlation, then just use the average. Just use the straight up average. All right, here's an example. So this one you're going to do with me. This one is on the uh, middle of page, middle bottom of page five. Um, so here we're going to use alpha equals 0.05 in the PPMC table to find the equation linear regression um, scatter line plot and then use that equation to estimate, uh, to approximate the income for 40,000 cars. So cars, is cars my X or my Y, guys? Is cars the X or the Y, 40,000 cars? X. Yep, it's my X. So this is going to be my X. And it's in 10,000s. So 40,000 cars really means an X of 4. Do you see what I'm saying? Because this is every 10,000 cars is 1, so 40,000 will be x is 4. So here my x is 4. I want to know what the y would be when x is 4. So I'm going to put this data in. This is my data that I have. And um, I'll go ahead and show you. So this is my, this is my data the cars, 63, 29, 20.8, 19.1, 13.4, 8.5, and then here are the Ys. And then I'm going to go to stat, 
test up, because it's at the bottom, Lin Reg key test. Hit enter. List one, list two, frequency one, and then leave this as not equal to. And then leave the um, Reg EQ blank and hit calculate. Now, here's my y equals AX plus A plus BX. Here's my A, 0.39, well, you can just do it just fine over here, um, 0.3963, and then my B is 0 0.1061. I just do like four decimals because I give myself plenty. So here's my formula, Y equals A plus BX. Perfect. Now, I want to know for when X is 4. So I'm going to put 4 in for X right here. There we go. 0.3963 plus 0 0.1061 times 4. And when you find that, you'll get 0.32 billion. I'm sorry, 0 0.82 um, billion. So not quite a billion dollars, a little less than a billion dollars, but still it's pretty good. Totally happy with that, right? So that is your um, estimate for how much money someone would make if they had 40,000 cars. If they had a 4 here, they should put, get um, 0.82 over here, which is 820 million. That's pretty decent. Okay, and again, only because my R was 0.982, totally aligned. My, my, my R is really big, 0.982. So this is totally aligned, which means that I should use this line to predict my um, X from my Y and my Y from the X. They can predict each other. All right, so you guys do lab problem five. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so again, I'll show you. It's second stat plot. So second and stat plot's right above it. Go to the first one. Turn it on, make sure it's on, and then X1, X2, and the dots, and then do zoom, which is right here at top, in the middle, the number 9. 9, right there. And it'll, it should pull it out for you. Um, okay, so we have five minutes left, guys, four minutes left. I need you guys to do lab problem number five. Um, here's the thing. So use two things. You do not have to do the test. Don't do the test. The first one, R is negative 0.994. So just, we know that it is a line. So find it when it is a line. And then at the very bottom, you'll see, the, if you look at your page, it says, what if R is 0.323? If R is 0.323, it's not a line. So figure out what, what you would do then. So I'm going to put you guys in your rooms for four minutes, and then, or three minutes, and we're going to come back and um, take a look at that. So again, lab problem five, find it for 17 absences, right? So absences is my X or my Y, figure out which one that is, and then predict the other one from that. Okay, so we are all back. Um, let's go over this quickly so that we can uh, move on since our time is kind of out here. Um, so we've got um, here is you guys go ahead and do your linear edge C test and Y equals A plus BX. A is 102.49 and B is negative 3.62. So you have Y equals 102.49 minus 3.62X. 17 absences. Absences is my X value, so I'm going to put that in for my X. And you guys should get 40.95 or 41. So your grade you expect will be 41. All good. Now, what if R is 0.323? If that's the case, then we do not reject H naught. It's not a line. If it's not a line, you can't use the line. You can't use this line is useless. It's pointless. Instead, use Y bar. All right, so how do you get to Y bar? Again, you do stat calc two bar stats on your calculator with x1, x2, and then you scroll all the way down to your y bars, to your y's, then there's y bar. y bar is 
73. So then you'd say that you think that y is 73. Just use y bar. Okay? All good. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, so you'll look at your um, PPMC table. Okay. If you were to grade it and say, okay, degrees of freedom is 5, alpha is 0 0.05, and so it's 0 0.666 is my critical value. So you do your test, and, and you find out from your test that 0.323 is totally not a line, but 0.9828, whatever it was, 0.9, but pretty much anything you're in the 0.9s, you're good. It's going to be aligned. Very rarely will your will your um, you know will you have something where it's where it's um, you know point nine and it's not aligned. You have to have you have to have only you know uh, six items and um, you know alpha point oh one and, and it has to be like in point nine one six or less. So generally speaking, um, this point nine something you guys had is very high. 0.944, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, that's totally aligned. Whereas 323 is totally not aligned. Does that make sense? 0.323, 0.944 you know, it's, it's aligned unless you're kind of in this range here. You'd have to be, you know, very small samples or something like that. And 0.323 is pretty much never aligned unless you're talking about something like where you have, well, which is not true. Um, you know, 25 items or more, but you had clearly not very many items, so so that's the deal with that one. But yeah, so generally speaking, um, pretty much this time because I told you, but in general you will do a test, and when you do your test, then you will um, your test will tell you whether or not you reject H naught or not. So if you reject H naught, it's a line. If you do not reject H naught, then it's not a line. That's how you know, basically. Okay, good. Um, any other questions? Or you feel free to go. Have a good weekend. And um, I'll stick around and ask, ask the questions for a couple minutes if you guys want. Uh, my office hours are going to be from 11 to 12 tonight as well if you have further questions. Or if you want to show me your extra credit for your binder, totally you can do that then too. <laughs>